Good evening again and welcome to an evening prayer which we're saying on the eve of Pentecost looking to the promise of the coming of the Spirit who launches the church into being, continues to indwell all Christ's followers and sends us into the world to proclaim his love. We praise you, God of love. For your Son, Jesus Christ. After he had ascended far above all heavens and was seated at the right hand of your majesty, he sent forth upon the universal church your holy and life-giving spirit that the gospel might be preached throughout the world. Bringing us out of darkness into your marvellous light. Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, or the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great king. In her palaces, God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded. Dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labour, as the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we had heard, so have we seen, in the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God. God has established her forever. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count all her towers. Consider well her bulwarks and pass through her citadels, that you may tell those who come afar that such is the Lord our God forever and ever. It is he that should be our guide forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32. On that very day, the Lord addressed Moses as follows. Ascend this mountain of the Abram, Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, across from Jericho, and view the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites for a possession. You shall die there on the mountain that you ascend, and shall be gathered to your kin, as your brother Aaron died on Mount Hall, and was gathered to his kin, because both of you broke faith with me among the Israelites at the waters of Meribath Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, by failing to maintain my holiness among the Israelites. Although you may view the land from a distance, you shall not enter it the land that I am giving to the Israelites. I will sing a new song to my God, for you are great and glorious, truly strong and invincible. May your whole creation serve you, for you spoke and all things came to be. You sent forth your spirit and they were formed. For no one can resist your voice. Mountains and seas are stirred to their depths. At your presence, rocks shall melt like wax. But to those who fear you, you continue to show mercy. No sacrifice, however fragrant, can please you. But whoever fears the Lord shall stand in your sight forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The second reading 
is from the letter of John, the first letter of John, reading from chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus Christ has been born of God and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world? But the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. There are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony of, that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. In Christ Jesus, the life-giving law of the Spirit has set us free from sin and death. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. It is the Spirit that enables us to cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness that we are God's children, and if God's children, then heirs of God. If we are heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if we share his sufferings now, we shall be glorified with him hereafter. These sufferings that we now endure are not worth comparing with the glory that shall be revealed. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Those verses from Romans 8 come from the passage in which Paul reminds us that the Spirit enables us when we are stuck for knowing how to pray, taking our inarticulate longings and turning them into intercessions. And so in silence now we bring our hard to put into word prayers for ourselves, for the world in which we live. At this time we need to pray for guidance for leaders, for honesty and integrity amongst those in power, for racial justice, for those who suffer from illness and those who mourn, and for whatever lies upon our own hearts as we bring them now before the God who sent his spirit to intercede and draw us into his presence.
Heavenly Father, thank you for our families and our friends. Thank you for all who support us and help us. And we pray for them now. We ask you that you will surround them with your peace. Be near to those who mourn. Be near to those who are afraid. now that we have been put right with God through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has brought us by faith into the grace of God. We rejoice in the hope of sharing God's glory. This hope does not deceive us. For God has poured his love into our hearts by the gift of his Spirit. Shall we join together in our Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory, glory are yours, now, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Visit us, Lord, we pray, wherever we may be, and drive from those places all the snares of evil. Let your holy angels dwell among us to keep us in peace, and may your blessing be upon us forevermore, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.